Okay, so there have been a mixed bag of emotions over the story of Mortal Kombat 1 since they rebooted the franchise, yet again. And a lot of people have given their opinions on the story, God knows I have as well. And in the echo chamber of the internet, we get a lot of the negative aspects of what people think about the story. But one aspect that I think people don't talk about enough when it comes to Mortal Kombat 1 is exploring two fan favorite female characters, and that is the relationship between Katana and Melina. And it's sort of crazy when you think about it. At this point, though they're not original characters, they're classic or sort of legacy characters to Mortal Kombat. They're pivotal parts of the story, especially in Katana's case. They're fan favorite characters. I mean, good lord, people were making death threats and ready to riot over Melina in Mortal Kombat X and 11. Also, note she was still in both games, so people go hard for Melina. But when you think about it, their relationship, considering that, you know, they're tied to each other, has never really been expanded upon and explored. And that's interesting to me. We always get Jax and Sonya together, and their stories are linked to each other. We get Liu Kang and Kung Lao on different occasions on and off. We even got a team up game with them and the Shaolin Monks, and I'm not even gonna touch on Scorpion and Sub-Zero. Which even looking at rivalries like Liu Kang and Shang Tsung or even Sonya and Kano, like even those are tied together and explored more than Katana and Melina have been, but that's kind of weird. In the original timeline, Melina and Katana were twins. Of course, we know that Melina was mixed with Tarkatan blood and Katana killed Melina, but since when has death ever been a consequence in Mortal Kombat, right? But even after that point in like the early games, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I do believe those are the details of like Mortal Kombat 2 and UMK3, they've never really been explored that much after that. We had them weird ass endings in Mortal Kombat Gold, but that's a game that a lot of people like never played. Hell, being honest, I only ever played Mortal Kombat Gold once on a Dreamcast, like a physical Dreamcast growing up as a kid. I didn't really get a chance to like get my hands on it and play it until I got much older, but that was pretty much it for the longest time. You will die, sister, and I will take this realm for myself. When we got the Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance, we got Katana in the game, there's no Melina, then Katana gets killed with the war with the Deadly Alliance, and then we get Mortal Kombat Deception, and Melina's back, and Katana's missing, which is kind of crazy. I want y'all to remember the fact that Mortal Kombat Deception has one of the greatest female rosters, excluding Mortal Kombat Armageddon of all time. It's just missing these two females. That roster, as far as the females are concerned, would have been damn near perfect, but I digress. So then we get Mortal Kombat Armageddon. Of course, we know going through the game with Taven that there's no real interactions with Katana and Melina at all. And then we get the Netherrealm era of games where we get the new trilogy. Yes, it's now retcon that Melina is now a clone of Katana and they weren't twin sisters that grew up together. That was a crazy retcon that to me was, I don't know, I think that should have been discussed more when planning out that game, but I'm nitpicking here. So Melina and Katana didn't grow up as sisters. Katana was just cloned to be make Melina, I guess, by Shang Tsung. And that's pretty much that. There's not much after that point as far as Katana and Melina is concerned. And in MKX, with Katana being a revenant, we don't get any interaction between the two of them at all. And then we get the horrific death of Melina that I will not be showing on this video because I refuse to acknowledge that death. And then of course, in Mortal Kombat 11, Melina's DLC, she's not even in the main story. And while Katana is resurrected in well, not resurrected, but she's brought back in her younger form. She's also still a revenant in that game. So the relationship between Katana and Melina has never really been like, I don't want to say explored, but shown to us as an audience in the lore of Mortal Kombat together. And that's the thing that I love about Mortal Kombat 1 so much. Melina is the princess of Outworld behind Sindel. Hell, being honest, after the events of Mortal Kombat 1, I guess she's Queen Melina at this point and Katana is by her side every step of the way. Seeing Katana have her sister's back and be protective of her sister is A, something I never thought I'd see, but it's also cool to look at. The visual of seeing Katana and Melina side by side with each other is actually awesome and it's more appealing considering we've never seen it before. Like the novelty of Scorpion and Sub-Zero being brothers in Mortal Kombat 1 is okay I guess, but when you take into account we've seen them sort of fight together and team up together numerous times throughout history now, especially with the Netherrealm games, eh, 
kind of doesn't hit the same way as it probably would if it was almost like Katana and Melina where we never saw it. I think that's the main reason why they sort of did Mortal Kombat 1 to have Scorpion and Sub-Zero at odds again, just sort of get back to basics. But seeing Katana and Melina together, we rarely see interactions between the two of them in any type of story mode or anything with the games, at least it's been an extremely long time since we have, and we're seeing them fight side by side. Just a non-evil Melina in and of itself is pretty cool. So I feel like from that standpoint, Netherrun pretty much knocked it out of the park with how they used and expanded on Katana and Melina's relationship in Mortal Kombat 1. Honestly, I wish Shindel did not die in that game so we could have gotten the three of them for a little while longer, but to see that happy family together, even if brief and temporary as it was, was still kind of cool. But those are just my thoughts on the twin sisters. Let me know what you guys think and how you feel about the relationship of Katana and Melina over the years. And you all have a good one. And I'm out. Kitana, I want your status. I want to be Princess of Edenia. It is my right. You have no right. You are not my sister. You were born of Shang Tsung's sorcery for Shao Kahn. What right do you have to the throne of Edenia? No. No! You are evil and have no place in this world. You are right, Kitana. But if I have no right to this realm, then neither will.